Hi, my name is Aaron Trebing, and I will be talking to you today about Whistler mode waves. They arise from thunderstorms and lightning, which basically occur because of cloud-to-cloud -cloud and cloud-to-ground interactions, and, and basically due to an uh, imbalance of charges between them. Um, and this causes an electrical breakdown of air um, at a certain voltage, basically, um, such that they must discharge and cause thunder and therefore lightning. Um, so this is the graph that basically describes um, what's happening. Uh, it's a more idealistic picture because um, we're not actually talking about antennas like AM radios are, but the important thing is that Whistler modes are antenna-like um, the way that the way that they were um, derived and basically how we know them to exist. Um, so this is just a very rough estimate of how they how they uh, actually act. And so now I'm going to show you a video to kind of give us a more realistic interpretation. So as you can see, one lightning strike goes off, and it and it carries on um, from this portion of the of the region or of the Earth to this part. And so what what has been done is that Antarctica has set up a a base or um, a station in the South Pole in Antarctica, obviously, and they've been picking up um, lightning from their conjugate point, which is the eastern seaboard um, of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, so basically, they've been picking up a lot of great data about the lightning storms in the area. And from this, they can find out, they can start to figure out a lot of information about the relativistic electron um, populations in general, and uh, also just for lightning in other planets. Some of the vocabulary that we'll be using includes um, spherics, which are impulsive crackling due to the broad spectrum radio bursts. Tweaks are spherics subject to dispersive distortion due to subionospheric propagation. And whistlers are specifically important because they're the ones that we hear descending in tone, which means that the different frequencies are showing up at different, um, at different times in the other hemisphere. Um, and they range between 1 and 30 kilohertz. And a hiss and chorus sound will also be found due to this, due to different um, reasons. Here's another video I'm going to show you. And this is basically an actual readout of lightning occurring. See these tones right here, the sounds, are the whistlers. And those are what are analyzed, whereas you can hear the crackling and the popping as or the popping as well. Um, so the Stanford Very Low Frequency Group in, in Antarctica has has picked up these values, and notice how the chorus and hiss are somewhat linked. Um, well, they're not necessarily linked, but they've been uh, theorized to be possibly linked. Whereas the whistlers are very distinct and have their own thing going on. Um, so yeah, this is very interesting stuff, and. Um, other data has been found. Uh, I'll show you a video of Jupiter in a second. Because um, they have found Whistler waves, which mean that there's lightning as well on Jupiter. So different measurements, um, different data can be taken in different ways, obviously. A ground-based measurement is, uh, is important because you have a lot of controllability over the location and, you know, how to... You don't have to consider changing uh, anything while it's in the air. Um, but a problem is that they, um, there's an obstacle if, you, if you're trying to consider looking at other planets, um, Whistler modes, or anything else like that. Um, yeah, where space-based is really good for um, figuring out you know, low noise um, systems, which could be important depending on where you are in the solar system. Some characteristics include... Um, the fact that basically it's a closed waveguide uh, due to the ionosphere being you know a boundary and the surface of the earth being another boundary um, and basically it radiates like electromagnetic dipole radiation um, it's not it's not exactly like that and as you can see in the in the graphs they're not they're not perfect um, and I think the cra the crackling and the hissing noise are specifically a reason for that um, but yeah, Whistler waves, uh, Whistler waves has also been examined to learn about different atmospheres, such as Earth, Earth, Venus, and even Jupiter. So, what how how these were derived was basically um, with using the uh, right-handed circularization um, plane wave 
and uh, basically different frequencies reach the conjugate point at different times, like I was saying. So that's how you get the, the sweeping noise, or the sweeping sound. Basically, yeah, it acts as a virtual waveguide caused by the B field of, of lines of the Earth, um, which is caused by the, the, the molten core, outer core of the Earth. Um, but yeah, these are just some consequences of it that, that came about by Kimura's research. And here's an actual graph of, um, of the trajectory of a path. And so basically ray tracing uh, techniques were used to, to, to consider all four of these um, results. And basically from this, a lot of information can be found. Um, and obviously, like I was saying, uh, they, they found lighting on Venus, but it was nearly circular polarization, which is exactly what we expect. And the wave components are nearly at 90 degrees out of phase, which makes sense as well, since we know that E must be perpendicular to B and B must be per perpendicular to, to K. Um, yeah, so I think that's my paper. Sorry for it being a minute too long, but uh, thank you.